Welcome back. This module is all about organizing your code into little units called classes, and then creating little instances of your classes called objects. In this lesson, we're going to define what each of these terms, class and object, means. The first question I'd like to answer is, what is an object? In programming, object means something a little different from what it means in the real world. Just about everything you've used so far in this course to store information has been an object. Dictionaries, strings, tuples, integers, etc. The word object in Python is a little tricky to define. You can kind of think of an object as something that Python has to keep track of. In this example, we have two objects, a list and a string. It's possible to have two variables but just one object. In this case, my list and other list both refer to the same object. You can do different things with different types of objects. You can append to lists, do math with integers, and concatenate strings, for example. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to make your own types of objects. In order to create your own object type, you need to define what someone can do with that object. You do this in what's called a class definition. The word class can mean either the type of an object or this definition. To demonstrate what it looks like to define a class, I'm going to use a class called point. The purpose of this class is going to be to represent a point in 2D space. Before I show you how to define the class point, I want to show you what it looks like to make a point object. In this example, the variable p is of type point. p is a reference to an object, and that object is a point. We call this object an instance of the point class. We can create variables that exist only within our instance p using dot notation. By saying p.x equals 3, we are creating a variable called x that only exists in the context of p. When variables are defined on an object, they are called attributes. We can print the value of these attributes the same way we print the values of other variables. Note that when we define p.x, that doesn't create a normal variable called x. If we just try to print x, it will be undefined. If we create another point, it will not automatically have x and y defined on it. We'd have to manually define x and y on each point we create. This is sort of a pain. Fortunately, Python provides a way to automatically set some attributes on every instance of point that we create. Here's what we have to do. We have to define something that looks like a function inside the class point. When you define a function inside a class, it's called a method rather than a function. This method has to be given a very specific name, underscore underscore init underscore underscore, and it has to take at least one argument. The first argument is generally called self, and it corresponds to a point that is about to be made. Here's what happens. On the second to last line of this program, we create a new point, and Python automatically calls the init method for us, passing the point we're about to make as self. Since self and p are identical, this means that creating the attributes x and y on self also creates them on p. Now we can assume that every point we create immediately has the attributes x and y defined, and by default, their values will be zero. Of course, you can also change x and y after p has been created. In this example, we create a point instance that corresponds to the point 4, 5 on a coordinate plane. You can create multiple points, and their copies of x and y are independent. The init method is often referred to as the constructor, since it is responsible for constructing new instances. We can actually make Python provide additional arguments to the init method by putting them in the parentheses when we create our point instances. Notice that we also have to add them as parameters to the init method. What Python will do is it'll sneak the instance we're making in as the first argument, self. It will then include all the arguments we provide in order after self. Notice the difference between self.x and x in the init method. Self.x refers to the variable we are creating within the instance. x by itself refers to the parameter in the method. The same is true for self.y and y. And check this out. As a final touch, we can give default values to the parameters x and y. This means we can either specify x and y when we create a new point, or we can not specify them, in which case they will be 0 and 0. Let's try making this point class in the editor. So first I'm going to say class point, and if I just do this, Python actually doesn't allow this. If you're going to define a class, you have to define the body of the class as well. So you have to do class, and then point, and then a colon, and you actually have to put something in the class body. So let's put an init method. We create it basically the same way that we create a function. We start with the word def, and I'm going to give it an init method, underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore. And remember, this has to take at least one argument, self. And I'm going to say self.x equals 0, and self.y equals 0. Now I'm going to create a point. I'm going to call it p1. 
And if I run this, it's not going to do anything. It just makes the variable p1, but it doesn't do anything with it. I'm going to show you what happens when we print this thing. If I say print p1, it says something about a point object. Now, this isn't terribly useful because it doesn't say anything about x and y, for instance. And we'll learn how to make this better in a future lesson. For now, I can print p1.x and I can print p1.y. And these print just like any other integer variables. Now, if I try to specify the x and y coordinates when I create the point right now, Python's not going to allow it. And it's because the init method doesn't have any additional parameters. It just has self. So the error we see is init takes exactly one argument and three are given. Now, it might look like we're only giving two arguments. But remember, Python secretly sneaks this in as the first argument. And these are actually the second and third arguments. So we're really providing three arguments. But init only takes one, and that's self. So let's have it take two more, x and y. And now, once again, I try to create a point at 3, 4. And I'm going to print the x and y values. And when I run this, uh-oh, what happened? There's still 0. Well, it's because I'm not actually using these parameters. I'm accepting them, but I'm then ignoring them and setting self.x to 0 and self.y to 0. So what I need to do is set self.x to x. And remember, this corresponds to the parameter. And this is an attribute on the point that's being made. And I can say self.y equals y. And now it's 3, 4. Now, if I give these parameters default arguments like this, this will still work. I can still provide values for x and y. But I can also make a point like this, p2 equals point, nothing. And what will happen is p2 will be snuck in as the first argument, self. And then the second and third arguments will just be filled in with their default values. So this point should be 0, 0. Print p2.x, p2.y. And I can also just specify the first of x and y. So what will happen is self will be p2 x will be 3, and y will default to 0. And the point is 3, 0. When you make a class, it's a good idea to include a comment in the class that describes what the class is. So I'm going to say this class represents a point in 2D space. And I'm going to put a comment above the init method. Create a point with optional x and y arguments, the parameters x and y have default values of 0 and 0. Now I'm going to add a comment right here, create a point at 3, 4, create a point at 3, 0.